Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY channel and today's video, well, it's all about the Evolution Miter Saw. It's the R255 SMS DBLI. Now, my version is the cordless version. However, Evolution do offer more or less the same saw in a corded version, okay? So the principles of how it operates and how accurate you can get it will be more or less the same. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. Accuracy. We'll see how accurate this machine is straight out of the box. Okay. In my last video, I put it together and I showed you more or less all the features that this machine has. If you've missed that video, I'm going to leave a link to it down below in the description of this video and in the pinned comment so you can go ahead and check it out. So yes, accuracy out of the box. I've not set this uh, machine up. As I've put it together, that's how it is. So we'll see how accurate it is straight out of the box as you put it together. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can actually set this miter saw up so it is accurate right to the fraction of a millimeter when it comes to miters, straight cuts, bevels, and everything like that. As actually, one of the great points that I do like about this machine it does offer you a lot of flexibility when setting this machine up. So you can make this saw perfect. First of all, let's check the table of our miter saw, if it's nice and flat and uniform across the whole length. To check that out, you're gonna need a nice and straight edge. For example, a level like this one, or a massive square like this one. I'm gonna use my square. And in my case, it seems to be absolutely perfect. I can't see any gaps on the whole length of the table. If you're not sure about the results and you think you may have a gap somewhere, grab a couple of pieces of paper and see if they do fit anywhere along the straight edge. If they do, that means you do have a gap on your table. In this particular saw, as you can see, we've got one part fence system, okay? So both of the sides are actually connected by this part over here. Now, there are some miter saws where both of the sides are independent of each other and they're a lot easier to set up. Now I'm gonna offer my straight edge against the fence to see if there are any gaps. And I can't see any gaps between them. If you think you do have a gap somewhere along the fence, well, use the paper trick again and see if the paper will slide in anywhere. But as I say, in my case, it's perfect. But what if you do have gaps on the table itself? Well, usually there's not much adjustment you can actually do with the table and I would ask the supplier for a replacement. Similar thing applies to one part fence, okay? If it's one part and you do have gaps along the way, there's not much you can do about that and I would ask for replacement. If it comes in two pieces, left and right, then you can adjust them independently, making sure they're straight and true against the blade. If need be, you can shift the fence itself. You do have two bolts on the left and two bolts on the right, okay? If there's any major issues with that, that it's not square to the blade itself, then you can shift that. However, with this saw, you can use the detents to make sure that the fence is square to the blade. And I'm gonna show you how to do that later on in the video. Now we're gonna check if the saw can actually cut straight. The miter is set up to zero degrees. For the test itself, you're gonna need a board that does have one edge straight and true. In my case, that's factory cut and it's absolutely perfect. The board itself needs to be as wide as possible so you cover more or less the whole traveling distance of the saw itself. As bare minimum, the board needs to be wider than halfway through the traveling distance of your saw. We need to mark the edge that's gonna go against the fence. And to see if the cut was straight, offer a square to the edge that we just cut against a source of light behind us to see if there is any gaps. Okay, I can't see anything. No gaps at all, so that's a pretty good quality cut. 
However, for example, if you did have some gaps at the front or at the back of the cut, well, you can adjust the saw to make sure you've got a perfect cut. However, first of all, what you need to do is to make sure that your saw is unplugged from power. In my case, I'm just gonna take out the batteries. To make sure we are making straight cuts with our saw, the fence itself needs to be square to the blade itself. To help myself with this job, actually this saw comes with a lock. I can lock the head of this saw in this position. Now we can offer the square to our fence and to our blade, making sure that the teeth of the blade itself will not be touching our square. However, if that's not possible, then you need to reference the square of the teeth of the blade, okay, at the front and at the back. If you were to reference on the front of the tooth, however, then on the body of the blade, then your reading will not be accurate. Make sure not to put too much pressure on the blade as you may actually bend it slightly and have inaccurate reading. So just offer your square against the blade. Right, the middle position of the blade, it seems to be fine. However, we need to check the whole traveling distance of the saw. Okay, so I put the saw right at the back. I'm gonna offer the square and everything seems to be all right. However, what do you need to do if you are not square? Well, in this particular case, it's quite simple as we're gonna use the detent to change that. However, if your monitor saw doesn't have that solution, then you would have to amend the fence itself. Usually, as I showed you, they will have some bolts holding it down and then you need to shift one end or the other end to make sure it's square to the blade itself. However, in this case, I'm gonna show you how to amend it with the detent. To adjust the detent, we've got four screws holding it. We need to loosen all four screws. However, two of them leave a little bit tighter. So uh, the detent doesn't move on you too freely. Make sure that the saw is locked into the zero position, okay? So if you want to move the angle, lock it in place at the zero position. Offer your square against the blade. And if you do have any gaps, you can amend the position of the detail by tapping the column. For example, if you do have a gap closer to the fence itself, you need to tap the column to the right hand side slightly. If the case is opposite, where the gap is closer at the front, then you need to tap it to the left hand side. And as you do tap the column here, the D10 moves with it. And it does have a bit of a wiggle room, a few millimeters each way. For me, this position is perfect, so I can lock the screws in place. If, for example, the position of that arrow on the degree section is not accurate, well, you can loosen it up and amend it to your liking. When we are happy with our setup, let's make another test cut to make sure everything's fine. Absolutely perfect, no gaps at all. As we have set up the detent at zero degrees correctly, we can be sure that the rest of the degrees should be set up correctly as well. So just to make sure, we're gonna do a 45 degree cut. And now we can offer both of the pieces to our square to see if we've got a perfect angle. With all that done, now it's time to check the accuracy of the bevels. So this particular mitre saw is a double bevel, so it goes left and right. And it does have some stop blocks built into this so we can establish the fine and correct position on any of the degrees. So as it is now at zero degrees and also at 45 degrees. First of all though, let's make a test cut and see where we are. For this test, we need to put the board upright against the fence. 
it needs to be also close to the capacity of the saw to get an accurate reading. And now we can check how accurate the cut is. Well, as you can see, no gaps, nice and clean cut. Now we're going to make sure that the blade is square to the table. I'm going to take off the batteries. Now grab yourself a square, put it on the table and offer it to the blade. And I can actually see a gap here and no gaps at the top. So there's a tiny gap just at the bottom. That means we need to adjust the positive stops. If you want even a better reading and understanding how much we are off, you can use this digital level box. Just simply switch it on, zero it out. So at the base here on the table, we're currently at zero. So let's attach it to our blade. And as we can see, we are 0.4 degrees out. Right then, so to adjust the bevel positions in our positive stops, i.e. at the minute we're looking for zero degrees, we need to undo this lever here that unlocks everything. And now as you can see, we do have two bolts holding the mechanism. So we need to undo these bolts. Just loosely, don't undo them fully. On each side of the machine, you've got two bolts, just like these, okay? Now, there's one without the nut and there's one with the nut. The one with the nut corresponds to 45 degrees setup, whereas with this one to zero degrees. And we can amend that until we get zero degree reading on our digital angle box. And as this is a double bevel, we need to make sure that adjustment is done on both sides. And when you are happy with the results and get that perfect 90, lock everything in place. As we've set up the correct bevel position for zero degrees, we may need to change the position of our indicators. Remember to do this on both sides. Now let's set up the positive stops for the 45 degree bevel on both sides. More or less similar process, however we're going to be using the other bolts as I did tell you before. Digital angle box, on the base I've got zero, let's whack it on our blade. Make sure the fences are moved out of the way so you don't cut them accidentally and they're not in the way. Release the lever at the back and the positive stop as well. And let's check the results on our angle finder. As you can see, bob on 45. Let's check the other side. And in this case, as you can see, we are out by 0.6 degrees. And the bolt that we need to amend is just located in this place, okay? So before, uh, for the zero degrees, we amended the first bolt from the back. Now we need to amend the second bolt closer to the blade. It does have a nut on there, so we need to loosen that nut up. And with the key provided, we need to amend the position of the screw until it changes the angle to 45 degrees on our reader. There you go. Perfect. And now we can lock and place that nut so the position of the bolt will not change. As the bevels are now set up at zero degrees and then 245s, all the angles in between should be fine. Let's do a test cut of a 45 degree bevel to make sure everything's fine. And we can check the results with our square. Now, as you've seen, straight out of the box, the machine was pretty accurate. Only the bevel was a major concern as it was out by quite a lot. However, overall, it wasn't too bad. Now, I'm quite curious, guys, which camp are you in? Uh, do you think that a tool, brand new, straight out of the box, as you put it together, should be absolutely 100% accurate without any involvement and checking the accuracy? 
or do you think that actually, well, as you put the machine together, you need to adjust it yourself to make sure it is accurate to 100%. Let me know down below in the comment section. I am quite curious. Now, if you are interested in this particular mitre saw or the corded version of it, which is far cheaper, um, then I've got some links for you down below in the description of this video. On top of it, guys, um, I do have a discount code for you down below as well. So, hey, you can buy yourself a decent tool get that discount and at the same time support my channel as well. If you decide to do that, thank you very much. However, for today, that's all and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before you go though, I've got some really cool playlists just over here. Click on those and maybe, maybe you'll find your next video to watch. Thank you very much. Take care.